Ever wondered what someone is really thinking or feeling? Body language often speaks volumes. In the fascinating world of nonverbal communication, our bodies can become a canvas, painting a vivid picture of our inner thoughts and emotions. Let's start with facial expressions. The human face is incredibly expressive, capable of conveying countless emotions without saying a word. For instance, a wide-eyed look of surprise or a furrowed brow of confusion can speak louder than any words. But remember, context is key. A smile might not always mean happiness, it could also be a mask, hiding feelings of discomfort or unease. Now let's move on to body posture and gestures. The way someone holds their body can tell us a lot about their state of mind. Someone standing tall with their shoulders pulled back is often seen as confident and assertive. On the flip side, slumped shoulders and a lowered gaze may indicate feelings of insecurity or sadness. Gestures, too, are a significant part of body language. Are they making large, expansive gestures? This could indicate that they are excited or passionate about what they're talking about. Conversely, smaller, controlled gestures might suggest that they're holding something back. But keep in mind, body language isn't a one-size-fits-all science. What might be a sign of nervousness in one person could just be a habit in another. It's essential to consider individual differences and context when interpreting these signals. And let us not forget the power of cultural differences. What's considered respectful body language in one culture might be seen as rude in another, so developing an understanding of cultural nuances can greatly enhance your ability to read body language accurately. Now that we've covered the basics, it's time for you to start observing. Watch people around you, your friends, family, colleagues. Notice their facial expressions, their posture, their gestures. The more you observe, the better you'll get at reading these silent cues. Understanding body language is the first step in reading anyone instantly. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the world of non-verbal cues and uncover more tips on how to read people like an open book. The eyes are indeed the windows to the soul. Let's delve a little deeper into the realm of eye contact. Have you ever noticed how the gaze of someone can make you feel comfortable or uneasy? That's because our eyes can convey a multitude of emotions and intentions. When someone maintains steady eye contact, it could indicate confidence, sincerity, or even dominance. On the other hand, averted or fleeting eye contact might suggest discomfort, nervousness, or a lack of interest. Now let's not confuse a lack of eye contact with shyness or cultural differences. It's crucial to consider the context and an individual's cultural background. In some cultures, direct eye contact can be seen as disrespectful, while in others, it's a sign of honesty and trust. Moving on to something even more fascinating, pupil dilation. Our pupils naturally expand and contract in response to light. But did you know they also react to psychological stimuli? Yes, the dilation of pupils can offer us a peek into someone's mind. Research has shown that our pupils dilate when we are interested or aroused. So if you notice someone's pupils expanding while they're looking at a piece of art, listening to a piece of music, or even while they're conversing with you, it might indicate that they're genuinely interested or excited. But remember, the subtlety here is key. Pupil dilation is a minute and involuntary response, and observing it requires a keen eye. Also, it's important to consider other factors such as light conditions and potential substance use, which can also influence pupil size. Eye contact and pupil dilation are just two aspects of the fascinating world of nonverbal communication. The next time you're engaged in a conversation, try to pay attention to these subtle cues. You might discover a whole new layer of understanding. Observing eyes can provide a wealth of information about a person's state of mind. And with that, we've unlocked another door in our journey to better understand human behavior. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the world of micro-expressions in our next segment, Unveiling the Hidden Language of Micro-Expressions. Imagine you're engaged in a conversation and you notice a flash of an expression on the other person's face. It happens so quickly you might question whether it was real or just a figment of your imagination. This, my friends, is what we call a micro-expression. Micro-expressions are brief, involuntary facial expressions that occur in response to specific emotions. They last for only a fraction of a second, typically about 1 25th to 1 50th of a second. Despite their fleeting nature, they are a powerful tool in reading people as they offer an unfiltered glimpse into a person's true emotions. Now let's delve into a few common micro-expressions and their interpretations. First off, we have happiness. 
A genuine smile, known as a Dushan smile, involves not just the mouth, but also the eyes. The corners of the eyes crinkle, creating crow's feet. Next, we have surprise. This is characterized by raised eyebrows, wide eyes, and a dropped jaw. It's an expression that's hard to fake, making it a reliable indicator of genuine surprise. Then there's disgust. The nose wrinkles, the upper lip may raise, and the person may squint. Disgust is a particularly strong emotion, and spotting this micro-expression can be a clear sign that something is amiss. Fear and sadness are two other emotions that often show up as micro-expressions. Fear is marked by widened eyes and tensed brows, while sadness may be signified by a slight pulling down of the mouth corners or a faint quivering of the chin. Finally, we have contempt, often considered the most telling of all micro-expressions. It's characterized by a one-sided mouth raise. Spotting contempt can be a critical cue that the person is feeling superior or dismissive. Micro-expressions, fleeting as they may be, can reveal a person's genuine feelings. Mastering the art of spotting these can prove invaluable in understanding people beyond their words and truly reading what lies beneath the surface. Remember, it's not just about observing these expressions but understanding the context in which they occur, so keep practicing and honing your skills. Micro-expressions, fleeting as they may be, can reveal a person's genuine feelings. Listening is more than just hearing words. As we delve deeper into the art of understanding people, it becomes clear that the act of listening plays a crucial role. But what kind of listening are we talking about here? Enter active listening, a communication technique that requires the listener to fully concentrate, understand, respond, and then remember what is being said. This isn't just about the words spoken, but also the non-verbal cues that accompany them. By engaging in active listening, we can catch subtle hints from body language, facial expressions, and even the silence between words. So, while the speaker might be saying one thing, their body could be telling a completely different story. Now, let's talk about the voice. The way a person speaks can reveal a lot about what they're feeling. Variations in tone and pitch can convey an array of emotions and intentions. A high pitch might indicate excitement or nervousness, while a low pitch could suggest confidence or calmness. Rapid speech may denote anxiety or eagerness, and slow speech might reveal thoughtfulness or uncertainty. Consider also the volume of the voice. A loud voice can express anger, fear or enthusiasm, while a soft one might indicate shyness, secrecy or even sadness. Listening to these variations can give us a better understanding of the speaker's emotional state and intentions. Aside from the voice, active listening also involves paying attention to the pauses. A long pause might mean the person is collecting their thoughts, feeling uncomfortable or intentionally creating suspense. On the other hand, a lack of pauses could suggest the speaker is nervous or trying to control the conversation. Active listening is an art that takes practice. It requires patience, attention and a genuine interest in understanding others. It's about creating a safe space for communication where people feel heard and understood. Remember, our aim isn't to judge or psychoanalyze, but to better understand the unique individuals around us. By mastering active listening, we are one step closer to reading people effectively and navigating our social world with more confidence and ease. Active listening is a key skill in decoding the messages that people send. Now let's delve deeper into the world of psychological tips. Let's start with a fascinating concept known as mirroring. This is when we subtly mimic another person's body language to establish rapport and build a connection. It's a powerful tool used by everyone from negotiators to salespeople. It's all about aligning your actions with theirs, mirroring their gestures, their posture, even their tone of voice. But remember, subtlety is key here. Overdoing it can come off as insincere or manipulative. Moving on, let's discuss the art of detecting deception. It's not easy, but there are telltale signs that can give someone away. One of these is inconsistency. If someone's words don't match their body language, it could be a red flag. For instance, if they're saying they're excited but their face and tone are flat, there's a disconnect that might suggest they're not telling the truth. Another technique for spotting deception is looking for clusters of behaviors. Rather than relying on a single sign, you should be on the lookout for a combination of signals. For example, someone might avoid eye contact, fidget, and provide vague answers all at the same time. These behaviors together could indicate that they're not being honest. Next, we need to consider the impact 
of cultural differences. Different cultures have different norms when it comes to body language and behavior. Something that's considered respectful in one culture could be seen as rude in another. So it's essential to be aware of these differences when trying to read someone. But don't worry, there are also universal cues that transcend cultural differences like the expressions of basic emotions such as happiness, sadness, anger, surprise, fear and disgust. These advanced tips can give you an edge in understanding people. But remember, practice makes perfect. The more you observe and interact with people, the better you'll get at reading them. So keep practicing and stay tuned for our next segment where we'll discuss intuition and gut feeling. Trust your instincts, but validate your perceptions. This is a phrase you've probably heard before, but it's especially pertinent when it comes to understanding people. Our intuition, that gut feeling we often get, is an essential part of our psychological toolkit. Intuition is like a quick acting compass, guiding us towards better understanding of the people around us. It's that hunch, that inexplicable feeling that tells you something about someone before they've even opened their mouth. It's a powerful tool, but it's not infallible. That's why it's crucial to validate your perceptions. This simply means cross-checking your initial gut feeling with the other cues you've learned about are there facial expressions of body language, tone of voice, and words consistent with what your intuition is telling you? Or is there a discrepancy? Remember, intuition is not a psychic power. It's a skill, a muscle that can be developed and refined over time. It's about being attuned to your own feelings and emotions as reactions to the behaviors and expressions of others. So how do you hone this skill? Start by paying attention to your gut feelings in different situations. Reflect on what triggered these feelings and whether they were accurate or not. This self-awareness can help you calibrate your intuition for future interactions. Next, practice mindfulness. This isn't just about meditation, but also about being present in the moment and open to these subtle signals people send out. This heightened awareness can boost your intuitive understanding. Finally, trust your, uh, think yourself. This might be the hardest part. In a world that often values logic and evidence over feelings, tr trusting your intuition can feel like going against the grain. But remember, intuition is simply another a form of knowledge, one that's rooted in your collective experiences and observations. So, so keep practicing keep observing and keep trusting your instincts because intuition backed by observation and understanding can be a powerful tool in reading people well, let's recap the 15 psychological tips we've covered today we started with the basics of body language exploring facial expressions posture and gestures then we delved into the significance of eye contact and pupil dilation from there we moved to the subtleties of micro expressions those incredibly brief displays of true emotion. We emphasized the role of active listening and the messages conveyed through variations in tone and pitch. Our journey into advanced psychological tips introduced the concept of adapted mirroring, spotting deception through inconsistencies and clusters of behaviors and the importance of cultural awareness. Finally, we touched on the role of intuition and gut feeling, encouraging you to trust your instincts, but also to validate them with additional cues. Remember, practice makes perfect. Keep observing, keep learning, and you'll become adept at reading people instantly.